Hello students, looking at current affairs for 26th August, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 14, we look at them in detail. The first one, Monmohan Singh set to lose SPG cup. So this is regarding special protection group. So you should know about SPG, special protection group. It was formed after the assassination of Indira Gandhi. So SPG is a group which protects the Prime Minister of the country. So Prime Minister, uh, um, then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was assassinated. So after that, in 1985, SPG was formed. Even the parliament passed the SPG Act in 1988, dedicating this SPG group to protect the Prime Minister of the country. Former Prime Ministers have also been involved. Initially, it did not involve former Prime Ministers. But then when outgoing Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated, so at that time, then Prime Minister VP Singh, uh, he, when he came to power in 1989, he included former Prime Ministers also. So, you can see the former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh also has this SPG cover presently along with his wife. His daughters have voluntarily given up SPG cover in 2014. And now the news is that after a three-month review involving the Cabinet Secretariat and Ministry of Home Affairs with inputs from intelligence agencies like RAW and IB, what has been done is government is likely to withdraw the SPG protection for Manmohan Singh and his wife, the former Prime Minister. So this is the news. It's an elite protection force of about 3,000 officers meant for prime ministers, former prime ministers and their families. So presently this SPG protection after it is withdrawn from Manmohan Singh would be available only for Mr. Modi, Congress President Sonia Gandhi and her children Rahul and Priyanka. So this is the news. But then it has become controversial if the withdrawal comes from former prime minister Manmohan Singh because government did not withdraw it for former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee. He was bedridden and he was, you know, restricted to his house till his, uh, he had protection from 2004 till the time he passed away in 2018. So now, if protection is removed from former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, it would be controversial. Then, this is the detail given. You can see about SPG, the elite squad, which we just discussed. So, SPG personnel come from uh, the paramilitary forces like uh, Interdependent Border Police, Central Reserve Police Force and Central Industrial Security Force. Then next is, let us wage a war on plastic, says PM. So, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged the people to observe the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi on 2nd October 2019 as a day when we pledge to make India plastic free. So he has also urged municipalities, NGOs and corporate sector to come up with ways for safe disposal of accumulated plastic waste before the power. So even in his Independence Day speech on 15th August, he had urged the people to shun single-use plastic. Even in his Man Ki Baat, he has spoken of people that he has urged people to participate in annual Swachhta Hi Seva, that is quest for cleanliness as a service. So this is there. You can see, he says, we shall not only dedicate 22nd October 2019 as a day when India is open defecation free, but also lay the foundation for new revolution against plastic. So, it will be a revolution by people themselves throughout the country, is what Prime Minister Narendra Modi says. He also appealed to the corporate sector to initiate steps, you know, find out ways and means for appropriate disposal of all accumulated plastic. It can be recycled, it can be transformed into fuel, is what he says. Then next is, Separate flag law key to peace. So this is Raga group. After Jammu and Kashmir's special status has been withdrawn, it was the country. It was the only state in the country which had its own constitution and flag. But now Naga, Nagaland, her Naga extremist group has, for the first time, said that a separate flag and constitution are necessary for honourable solution to the 22-year-old peace process in the Naga case. So it is the IM faction of NSCN. That is Nationalist Socialist Council of Nagaland, the separatist group. So it's one faction, I am faction, Isaac Movia faction, has had a framework agreement signed with the central government on August 3, 2015. So the, the NSC and I am faction had already given up uh, uh, violence. It had declared a ceasefire in 1997 and a framework agreement was signed in 2015. But then there has been no headway since the three years, three years since the agreement was signed. So now this group has said that uh, for a peaceful solution, a separate constitution and flag is important. And center also last year had said that peace process would be incomplete if only 
one faction it comes out board because there are six other naga extremist groups and some of them are dormant also means they are not active presently but they also have to be taken on board in the negotiations to find a peaceful solution is what the central government rightly insists on but then this nsc and iim framework agreement is hanging loose now in the mid air then next is new law to curb lynching unlikely so this is regarding mob lynching so there is an empowered group of ministers egum which has been formed headed by union home minister imit shah to suggest measures to combat mob lynchings but it has it has not met yet and senior officials say that there is uh, no chance that a new law on such crimes would come up so rajasthan assembly has actually made a new law on mob lynching it is called rajasthan protection from lynching bill 2019 but then this bill which calls for life imprisonment and fine up to rupees 5 lakh for persons convicted of lynching it has to be approved by the center because this is a bill which is amending ipc indian penal code so central law been amended by a state it would require approval from the central government from the president but president's assent is actually the assent of the central government which is the council of ministers who advise the president that is in directly the ministry of home affairs because it lies in its domain so that's what it says then it is highly unlikely that this bill may also get an assent from the central government so this is there and there are no chances that a central government initiates a bill on mob lynching so mob lynching is not even recorded as a separate crime as a national crime records bureau so lynching incidents are not separately categorized they are listed as crimes under murder it's but you should know that the supreme court a year ago in july 2018 had given its judgment in which it laid down several preventive remedial and punitive measures to combat the crime of lynching and it had a year later even issued a notice to the central government the nhrc and state governments on please seeking the implementation of this judgment which it had given a year ago then next is ngt seeks timeline for cleaning yamuna river So the National Green Tribunal has directed stakeholders to give specific schedule for cleaning the Yamuna River. So it has said that there have been repeated timelines being given, and they have not been adhered to. And this has been going on for the last thirty years, and pollution in the river still continues. Yamuna, which is an important tributary, a major tributary of Ganga River, the there has been dissatisfaction expressed by the National Green Tribunal over the cleaning of this river. and it has directed the three governments delhi government haryana government and up government to submit a performance guarantee of rupees 10 crore each within a month so this it had announced earlier too and now it wants stakeholders to give specific schedule for cleaning the river then next is cisr to certify csir to certify air quality monitoring instruments so union environment ministry has tasked CSIR Council of Scientific and Industrial Research National Physical Laboratory with the task of certifying air quality monitoring instruments so air quality monitoring instruments are essential because central government has initiated this program called national clean air campaign so under this campaign there is a need for monitoring air quality and these air quality monitoring instruments are presently being imported so there is a need for certifying these instruments so that is being undertaken by CSIR laboratory so low cost air quality monitoring instruments are required to monitor levels of nitrous oxide ozone and particulate matter so this national air clean air campaign has been launched by the central government in jan 2019 it seeks to reduce particulate matter pollution by 20 to 30% in at least 102 cities by 2020 so it requires a vast monitoring network of sensors that can capture the rapid fluctuations of pollutants it is necessary to ascertain how these gases and particles are present and how they affect the health of the population so you can see currently the machines which are employed by central and state pollution control boards are imported and they cost up to rupees 1 crore and uh, you know to install and to maintain them around rupees 50 lakh are required every 5 years so this is a huge cost which has to be incurred so that is why you can see that Uh, central physical uh, csi national physical laboratory may start will start certifying air quality monitoring instruments now low cost air quality monitoring instruments so here you can see this is regarding the national clean air program launched in jan 2019 so it covers around 100 cities and you know air quality management plan would be proposed for these cities guidelines will be worked out for indoor air pollution management too so it requires these air quality monitoring stations 
so there will be these scientific air quality monitoring stations as well as manual monitoring stations which would be established across the country in these cities if pm particulate matter 2.5 levels etc would be monitored this you can see all metros are in this list of 100 cities all big metros included so targets reducing pollution levels by 35% in next 3 years and by 50% in the next 5 years. The next is Modi launches Bahrain Temple project. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched 4.2 million redevelopment project for 200 year old Shri Krishna Srinathji Temple in Manama, the capital of Bahrain. So this signifies strong ties between the two nations. Bahrain ha is a Gulf nation and it has around 3,50,000 Indian nationals mostly from Kerala. So, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the first Indian Prime Minister to visit this Gulf nation and offer prayers at the Srinathji temple, the oldest temple in the region. And he brought Prasad there with the Rupee card, which he launched in Dubai, UAE, the joining nation. Then next is IMF report flags several delays in India's data reporting. So, this is regarding International Monetary Fund. So, IMF comes up with this report. And in this report, it has said that there have been various inconsistencies which have crept into dissemination of fiscal data as such data sets from India. So questions have been raised about delays in data dissemination as such in general in India too. Various government agencies have not published their data like national crime records, video data, dates, the latest data dates back to 2016 and we are in 2019. Accident statistics has not been updated since 2015. And now this is IMF showing that there are inconsistencies in fiscal data sets too. So IMF has this report which comes up, which is called Annual Observance Report of the Special Data Dissemination Standards for 2018. So this is Special Data Dissemination Standards, which IMF has come forth with and uh, all IMF members have to adhere to them. And uh, BRICS nations as such, in excluding India, have near impeccable record as such. But India, which earlier had a near impeccable record, now shows that there are non-compliance in multiple categories for the year 2018 and to some extent even in 2017. Otherwise, it was a near perfect dissemination record of India as such. Too. So, this has been highlighted. Though IMF says it is non-serious, but then there are differences you can see. So, IMF has launched this special data dis dissemination initiative in 1996 to guide members to enhance data transparency and help financial market participants with adequate information to assess the economic situations of individual countries and india has also subscribed to them in 1996 itself but now you can see there are inconsistencies there are over 20 data categories which imf considers for its report and uh, it this, these are required to capture the nation's economic health so these include data like national accounts, GDP, GNI, production indices, employment data, central government, uh, you know, uh, other central government related data. So all these data, you know, operations data, they are to follow certain standards, but there have been deviations which have been highlighted. So there are three types of deviations which have been listed in the report. First is delay in data dissemination. Second is country does not list the data category in the advanced release calendars despite category being mandated by SDSS, SDDS and third is data is not disseminated at all for a particular period. So delay, no data and uh, not listed itself. So an X entry which is there in the report of IMF, this shows that data is not being disseminated. O entry means no mention in the ARC, you know, the advanced release calendars. So that is there. So you can see this is India's uh, deviations which have been shown over the years and uh, it is the former acting chairman of National Statistical Commission PC Mohanman. He says that India's deviations are a result of inadequate care paid to data dissemination related issues which leads to lack of openness and transparency. So you know, data not been disseminated, not mentioned, they are shown here. So you can see and the deal is delay in data dissemination. Over the years it has been shown it has increased significantly in 2018. And this was the period of global financial crisis 2009-2010 and now it's 2018. Then next is no new engines for Jaguar phase out starts in 2023. So the Indian Air Force has called off the long-pending plan which has been there for new engines for the Jaguar fighter flight. So 
So the Goa fighters they require new engines, but then there, it has been delayed several times. So now there are huge time and cost overruns. So that's why the Indian Air Force has given up this plan. So phase out of Jaguars will start from 2023, and the earliest variants would be withdrawn then. It will be over the 15 years that all the Jaguars will be withdrawn by 2038. The Indian Air Force has 116 Jaguars, the fighter jets, and the plan is to replace the current, or originally the plan was to replace the current underpowered engines on 80 jets with more powerful Honeywell F-125 IM engines. But the plan has been repeatedly delayed. So, you know, India, which is one of the last users of the Jaguar jets, has procured older Jaguar airframes from several countries. So it has procured them from France and Oman, which has given them these Jaguar airframes for free, free of cost. Even UK has uh, given some things at a nominal cost. So over the past few years, we have cannibalized, means we have taken parts, spares from them to maintain our fleet. So these old Jaguars are still being used by India. They will also be uh, powered with uh, advanced short-range air-to-air missiles, ASRAM from Europe. So Europe missile maker NBDA is providing us with ASRAM too. Uh, air to air missiles for the Jaguars, but then its engine being upgraded is not being scrapped. So, that plan has been scrapped now. So, this is how Jaguar has faced several delays. Even Mirage 2000 upgrade has been faced with delays, and now Jaguar, which is presently in use, is detailed out where you can see. This is regarding how France, Oman gifted us UK at a nominal price, provided us with these Jaguar airframes, which India is using. Parts from it are being used by India. The next is RIPS emerge as G7 summit kicks off. So, this is regarding G7 summit, which is taking place in France. So, here US President Donald Trump insisted that all leaders have gotten along well, there is no problem which Western allies have with USA, but then even British Prime Minister Boris Johnson voiced concerns about creeping protectionism and those who support tariffs. So it says they are at a risk of incurring the blame of the downturn in the global economy. So that global, global economic downturn is being seen, those worries are there across the globe, including in G7. And also now we are seeing that countries are not agreeing on issues. There is USA is on trade war with China, also, it is uh, engaging Iran, you know, in war. North Korea, the relations are strained, and as well as with Russia. So, that has been highlighted. Trump had threatened the meeting's host, that is France, with tax. He had said that French wine would be taxed like they have never seen before unless France drops the digital tax on U.S. technology companies. So, such threats have continued from U.S. President Donald Trump. And European Council President Donald Tusk, who also participated in the G7 discussions, warned that the EU would respond in kind if Mr. Trump acted on such threats. And this is regarding G7. Again, G7 summit where Prime Minister Narendra Modi met with his British counterpart, Boris Johnson. So, they discussed number of issues, bilateral issues between India and UK, like trade, investment, defense and education. On the sidelines of G7 summit in France. It is taking place in Biarritz in France, where uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi reached from Manama. He was in Manama, Bahrain. We saw he laid the foundation for redevelopment of the temple here. Uh, and after this first ever Prime Minister visit to Bahrain, he visited France for the G7 summit, participating there. So, G7, India is not a member, it's an invitee. You should know the G7 members are US, UK, Japan, Germany, France, Italy, and Canada. G8 includes G7 plus also Russia. So earlier G8 summits used to take place, but now Russia has been excluded. So G7 summits take place. Then G20 nations are, are these, you know, G5 plus G8 plus other nations. So G5 includes India. India, China, Mexico, Brazil, and South Africa. And BRICS, you know, same. India, China, here Mexico is involved. Here we have South Africa involved. G5, does, uh, G5 has Mexico involved and here there is no need for, uh, there is no Rus Russia because Russia is there in G8. So instead of Russia, the other member here is Mexico. Then next is Brazil's army fights Amazon fires after more flare-ups. So Brazil deployed two C-130 Hercules aircraft to douse fires devouring parts of Amazon rainforests. 
So hundreds of new blazes were ignited ahead of the nationwide protests here over the destruction of the Amazon rainforests. And uh, planes have started dumping thousands of liters of water here. There's a global uproar. This is the worst fires in years. And Amazon rainforests are the world's largest rainforests and they're crucial for mitigating climate change. They are called the lungs of the world and they are on fire. So this firing takes place, you know, it's man-made. Land clearing takes place by burning the forests and during the months long drying season. So then crops can be grown here, grazing can take place. But then number of fires have aggravated significantly and they threaten to torpedo uh, a huge part of the Amazon rainforest and also affect the trade agreement which has finally been agreed on between European Union and South American countries, the Mercosur, which includes Brazil. So it has been negotiated for over 20 years and now it has been concluded. But now European company, uh, European uh, Union Council, EU Council president as such has said that it is hard to imagine European countries ratifying a trade pact with Mercosur bloc as long as Brazil fails to curb fire ravaging Amazon. So actually, the present French uh, present Brazilian president Jair Bolsonaro has been blamed for this because he had insisted on Brazil developing Brazil undertaking economic activity at the cost of environment, on the, at the cost of Amazon rainforest. He had also made a statement that there are forest fires all all over the world, and this cannot be used as a pretext for possible international sanctions. But the number of uh, forest fires have increased significantly and now under pressure even Brazilian president has vowed zero tolerance approach to criminal activities in Amazon and has promised strong action to control the fires. So here you can see the Amazon fires being shown here. The number of incidents in Brazil and joining countries where Amazon lies. You can see there have been 72,843 fires in Brazil this year with more than half in the Amazon region. And it's an 80 percent increase compared with the same period last year. So it is according to the country's uh, space research center itself. So the illegal loggers, miners, and cattle ranchers, which are having these uh, uh, forest fires initiated, and they have uh, affected a huge area of Amazon rainforest. Three lakh forty-four thousand five hundred hectares have been destroyed since January 2019. And this is regarding Mercosur nations, the 20 year negotiation which resulted in a deal, trade deal between European Union and Mercosur. So, Mercosur has four members that is Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay. So, Mercosur has actually been formed under Treaty of Asconcion in 1991 and was a formal customs union which was also initiated in 1994. Even Mercosur Parliament was formed, which held its first session in 2007. Venezuela became a full member, but presently Venezuela is not a member of Mercosur. It has been excluded. Brazil, Bolivia, an adjoining nation, also wants to join the bloc. So it's a four-member grouping. So EU is a 28-nation grouping, which will become 27 after Britain exits. And Mercosur is a four-nation grouping of South America. This is the population comparison, the area, and the GDP comparison between the two. So EU, though the area is less, but the GDP is quite high, the population is more. Then next is Hong Kong police draws guns in latest protests. So this is regarding protests in Hong Kong. The pro-democracy rallies have been targeted. It has been going on for three months. And now it is for the first time that uh, police has used uh, water cannons. At, and at least one officer also fired his sidearm during pitched battles with the protesters. So uh, once at Petley, officers were caught outnumbered and isolated by masked youths wielding sticks and throw throwing rocks. So that is why one of the officers, it is seen, also fired his side arm. So initially, these protests in Hong Kong were against a proposed extradition bill to China, a bill which was proposing that extradition of Hong Kong national, Hong Kong people can take place to China. But then, this bill finally was withdrawn, but the protests continued and it has become a wider pro-democracy movement against the pro-Beijing government of Hong Kong. And China has also warned that it may not uh, step back and uh, you know, it may use violence also if these protests continue. They have likened the Hong Kong protesters to terrorists. So Hong Kong is uh, part of China under one nation, one China policy. Uh, but then uh, 
Hong Kong was ruled by UK till 1993 when it was handed over back to China. But it had been promised that Hong Kong would have democracy developed gradually in the region. It has been a financial hub in the region too, a global financial hub. But now Hong Kong is uh, you know, being ruled by a government which is not actually completely democratic. It's a poor Beijing government. So that is why people are protesting here. They want democracy installed. And the last news is airstrike in Syria, a message to Iran. So Israel conducted an airstrike in Syria, targeting the Iran's Revolutionary Guard station here. So it said that these Iran's Revolutionary Guards in Syria were planning a strike in Israel. And to counter that, they have struck them as such. So it was claimed by Israel that they were preparing to advance attack plans targeting sites in Israel from Syria over the last number of days. So that's why they were targeted. So it says that uh, there is zero tolerance, there will be no immunity as such for uh, Iran. Even if it trans tries to attack Israel from Syria, it would not be spread. So this is the region, the West Asian region shown here. You can see this is Israel and this is Syria, the adjoining nation. Lebanon lies up, Palestine within Israel region. So Israel's neighbors are Lebanon, Syria, uh, Egypt and Jordan. And Iran lies here, across Iraq, Iraq and then Iran. So Iran, it is said, is targeting Israel by its presence in Syria. The Revolutionary Guards present in Syria are targeting Israel. So it's fighting against USA. Syria has two factions fighting the Bashar al-Assad government, which is supported by uh, Russia, as well as Iran, and the Western countries, which are supporting USA, and the opposition group in Syria. So these are the news items. Thank you.